Well, good morning. We are still on the ship because today we are at sea. Yes, originally we were supposed to be in the Isles of Scilly, but due to the bad weather, in particular extremely strong winds, we are now having a day at sea. Well, mostly at sea because we're due to arrive in Cherbourg at around 7pm tonight. If you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we post a new cruise related video every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. So due to us not being able to dock in the Isles of Scilly today, we are having a sea day. So we chose to have a bit of a lie-in. Well, quite a bit of a lie-in actually. As we are heading to Cherbourg, the captain and the crew on board decided to move the clocks uh, forward by one hour to be in line with French time. So we've lost an hour. We did take the opportunity to have a beautiful lie in this morning. However, we did wake up at 12 o'clock. Yeah, so the morning was gone, but I think we needed it because we did really, really feel tired. We've had a really, really busy cruise and we just needed a little bit of rest, really. <laughs> Being a sea day, perfect time to do it. We had nothing to get up for, so we've got no breakfast information for you because we did not go. <laughs> As it was 12 o'clock and we'd been in the cabin, we made our way up to deck 14 just to have a little walk and a bit of fresh air. However, it was absolutely pouring down with rain. We couldn't believe it. We already knew the weather was gonna be bad, but we definitely felt really bad when we were out on deck. The rain was lashing down and ambience was absolutely drenched. So as you can imagine, we did not hang around for long. We decided to go down to Centre Court and just have ourselves a quick coffee in Dickens Coffee Bar. Really quite nice. It wasn't that busy, so it was quite easy for us to find a seat. And it is just a great location to sit back and relax. Then from Dickens Coffee Bar, we headed to the Botanical Lounge. We made our way down to the Botanical Lounge because the final vignette was to be performed. This was really funny. It was one of the funniest ones we've seen so far. It was called There's a Fly in My Soup. And it was all about two waiters and the antics that they got up to. It was absolutely fantastic really really funny the two actors performed it absolutely beautifully it was absolutely rammed i've said absolutely a few times yeah. in the botanical lounge it was just a really great performance and so much fun we've given you this tip a few times now but if you're going to see one of those vignettes particularly if it's on a sea day make sure you arrive early unfortunately it was the last vignette of this cruise so they performed four in total and yeah we couldn't praise them more after the vignette we were ready for lunch since we did not have time for breakfast this morning we headed up to the Boa Market for lunch today because we wanted to pick up something quite quickly and lucky for us, we thought they had steak on offer. Yeah, it looked absolutely delicious. So we both got ourselves a plate of chips, grilled minute steak and gravy. So the steak actually turned out to be not that great and it wasn't that much different to the steak we had a few days ago when we were in Sea and Grass. We just ate the chips really and a bit of gravy. I did go back and get myself a ploughman's lunch because they have a little station there where you could create your own so it was lovely to select the different bits of salad and cheese that i fancied and i thoroughly enjoyed that in the boa market there is also a waiter service and they will bring you drinks to the table you just have to use your cruise card and i just had a coke with my lunch so nothing too exciting that's one thing to know on board ambassador it is pretty much table service all the way and there are always plenty of staff available to take your order. It's been absolutely fantastic ordering drinks on board. We have never had to wait more than a couple of minutes ever in any bar, any restaurant, any venue. It has been fantastic service. After our lunch in the Borough Market, we decided to do something that we've always spoken about but never done before. Yeah, we took a trip to the laundry. Those of you that regularly follow our vlogs, you know we do quite long cruises and we always have the good intention of actually doing our laundry whilst on board, but we've never actually done it. However, today we changed all that and we thought, why not give it a go? Yeah, we had pre-planned yesterday because as we were passing Lidl, we picked up some washing tabs. 
otherwise you can buy them on board but it's cheaper to get them off the ship. We did two loads of washing and two loads of drying. For each load the cost is £3, so all in all it costs us £12 to do two lots of washing and two lots of drying, which actually isn't too bad when you work out the cost of the laundry that they do on the ship. You can request laundry and they provide you with a little magic bag, but it's not very big and it costs £14.95. So this is the size of the bag, just so you all know relative to my yes. head. <laughs> So the wash was really quick, 30 minutes. The drying takes a little bit longer and that's 40 minutes. They've always got an attendant pretty much on duty. And to be honest, the one we had, Angel, was absolutely fab. She was an angel. She really helped us out because we wanted to head to the spa. So she offered to take our washing out of the washing machine and put it in the dryer for us which meant we didn't have to hang around in the laundry. She just told us to come back in an hour and 20 and it would be done. It was really, really good service. And in terms of getting your laundry done whilst on board, couldn't have been easier. Ambassador do a lot of long haul cruises in terms of 30 days, 60 days. It's an absolutely great facility to have on board. There are 10 washers, 10 dryers, as well as ironing boards and everything you could possibly need, including wash baskets. Because we were doing our laundry, we thought, why not take that time, an hour and 20 minutes roughly for a wash and a dry to head to the spa. Now the spa on board offers some free facilities, including a sauna, steam room, relaxation beds, and experienced showers. So we headed down to deck two, which is right at the bottom of the ship, and met the attendant on the reception desk, and they said to us, you can just walk straight in, no need to book. Deck two is only accessible by the midship lifts. There are male and female changing rooms, everything you pretty much need, plenty of fresh towels in order to enjoy the spa. Lockers are provided and shower facilities in those changing rooms all for free. This is the first time we've been on a cruise ship where the spa has been free, so we definitely made full use of it. It's not a big facility like some of the mega ships, but it definitely is worth visiting. For us, when we were there, there were only probably two or three other people using the facility at the same time. The first thing we used was the sauna and had a fantastic experience in there. And we also used the steam room. And then we went on to have a little bit of a relax on the relaxation beds, which are heated. They were lovely. And then finally we used Use the experience showers. We had a fantastic time in the spa and we would recommend you making use of it whilst on board, particularly on a sea day as we did. And don't forget, it is 100% free. We spent around about 40 minutes in the spa and by this time we were just getting a little bit hungry so we made our way to afternoon tea. Before getting into the Borough Market we did have a quick walk up on deck 14 and it was so windy. So the weather had started to get progressively worse so we can completely understand why the captain had to change plans and divert us to Sherberg. In afternoon tea I just had some scones today and you had quite a few of those bacon rolls but you were saving those for later. Oh, midnight snack, got to be done. And what I was really pleased with is other passengers were doing exactly the same. There's two groups of people on board I would say, those that go to bed early and those that like to stay up and if you like to stay up there is no food available after 11.30 where it's just nibbles at 11.30 so it is definitely worth making sure you take advantage of the snacks and the sandwiches available in afternoon tea. I also had a couple of pastrami finger sandwiches and they were absolutely delicious. As we said on previous vlogs there is so much to cater for everybody's taste it's definitely worth popping in. While in afternoon tea, it was quite an eerie experience because we managed to get a table and seat really quickly. Now on previous days, it's been really busy and we struggled to find a seat. Today was the complete opposite. After afternoon tea, we wanted to find out why. So we headed to the theatre and we realised that the afternoon movie playing was Titanic and the theatre was pretty full. The reason why they're playing Titanic on a cruise ship is because now we're visiting three of the Titanic's last ports. That would be Belfast, Cove, Cherbourg. A little bit strange to watch the Titanic uh, during a storm as you're sailing into Cherbourg for safety, but the passengers seem to be enjoying themselves. We then headed back up to the laundry to collect our washing, which was done by now. Very, very easy. Grab a basket at the laundry and we took it back to the cabin. When 
When we got back to the cabin, we were surprised to see two little invitation envelopes addressed to ourselves. We opened up the envelope and we realised we'd been very, very lucky and we have been invited to the captain's table for dinner tomorrow night. So it is another formal night tomorrow, which was unscheduled because there was only supposed to be two. Good job we did our washing. So we're really, really looking forward to it. We're hoping it's similar to the chef's table experience on board, which comes at an additional charge of £89. So it's not cheap. So we are very, very excited and these invitations are beautiful, they're handwritten, so we can't wait to tell you about it tomorrow. We stayed in the cabin and just relaxed, made ourselves ready for the evening's entertainment. Tonight was going to be a smart night. As we've said before, Ambassador have three dress codes, a casual, a smart and formal evenings. To start the evening, we made our way to SW19 for the first time. It's the first time we've sat in the centre court area pre-dinner and it was a really nice atmosphere. It's nice to sit there and look out into the centre court area, you can do a bit of people watching and it's quite quiet there so you can definitely have time to chat to some of your fellow passengers. Really really nice location, it's located right at the top and you've got some absolutely fantastic views over the centre court. After we spent about half an hour sitting in SW19 in the centre court, we headed to the Buckingham restaurant for dinner. Now this evening was a little bit different because on the all aboard information sheet that you get delivered to your cabin, at quarter past nine in the Purple Turtle was a game show and we really, really wanted to go and see it. Now we've said in previous vlogs that unfortunately due to our late dining, we seem to be missing out on a lot of these premium game shows that are on every night at quarter past nine in the Purple Turtle. So if you have got a light sit and you do tend to miss them because normally we're roughly coming out of dinner about half past nine. By that time the game shows are either halfway through or coming to an end. So tonight we decided to only have three courses. I know it'll be a struggle. <laughs> we got there, sat down and ordered our food. Our starters arrived very quickly. I went for the cream of broccoli soup. Once again, as I've said on previous vlogs, the soup is fantastic aboard and this one was no different. For my appetizer slash starter, I also chose to have the chicken broth soup. Again, it was absolutely delicious. Really, really flavoursome. I'm a bit picky when it comes to meat in soup. However, the pieces of chicken were absolutely delicious and I definitely have it again. For my main, I had the lamb with a minty sauce and it was fantastic. The taste of this lamb was beautiful. I really, really enjoyed it. And for my main, I decided to go for roast turkey and I was blown away. The last time I had a turkey dinner on board a <laughs> cruise ship, it didn't really go very well. No, it was that infamous day on board p Avia, aka Christmas Day, that was pretty much a disaster, but this time complete opposite. The food was absolutely exceptional. The vegetables were cooked to perfection. The roast potatoes were delicious. The turkey just melted in your mouth. A little bit of cranberry sauce on the side. It was fantastic. It was that fantastic Dom absolutely cleared the plate. I think he could have licked it if he wasn't in the restaurant. <laughs> then on to dessert. I had the treacle tart for dessert. Very, very tasty. Quite a small portion, but just enough for me. And for my dessert, I opted to have their copper sundaes. Uh, they come with a variety of different ice creams every now and again with different toppings. And tonight it was absolutely delicious. I have crushed walnuts on the top and I definitely recommend their sundaes because they are delicious and they're proper gelato. So they're very, very tasty. Yeah. All in all, that took us around one hour. So we were rushing. We were rushing and we would hit the quarter past nine mark just as we were leaving. So we arrived in the Purple Turtle just as the game show was about to start. Unfortunately, the Purple Turtle was really busy and there were very, very few seats available. We managed to get one little table right at the back in order to enjoy the show. We tried our best. We tried our best for the time given. So we were lucky to get a seat at all, really. The game show itself was Ambassador's take on Blankety Blank. It featured some celebrity guests. The celebrity panel consisted of the captain, Sid Little, Sue Hodge, and George, the cruise director. Really, really good panel, and it was hosted then by the acting team on board. 
it was really really good show thoroughly enjoyed the show they got a number of passengers to come up and participate split into two teams really really quite funny even our friend kathy who we've met on board was one of the contestants taking part and she did really really well what a fantastic game show it really got everybody involved and it was great to see the captain taking part as well once blankety blank had finished we made our way into the palladium theater for the second performance by jimmy cricket when we went to see Jimmy's first show, his comedy didn't really resonate with us because it was probably not anything that we could remember or anything that we had any nostalgic value to. However, we went again, we gave him another chance and we would say this show was better than his first. However, we wish we hadn't done any research on Jimmy because we'd watched a few YouTube clips about him so we could understand what his comedy was like but it did then tend to just be repeat jokes of the ones we'd watched from about 30 years ago. <laughs> but the audience still really enjoyed and I think it was a better performance than the first one in our opinion. Once the show had finished, we made our way up to the observatory lounge to catch the last few minutes of karaoke. Karaoke was popular on board and there were a few good singers, but we only saw two or three singers there because we were in the light show, so we missed some of the entertainment that was going in the observatory lounge. There has been a duo on called It Takes Two and apparently they were absolutely fantastic tonight, but we just didn't have time to get to them. No, they had a standing ovation and we even spoke to a number of passengers and they just basically said how fantastic the performance were. Yeah. So it takes two, absolutely fab, make sure you go and see them. There is so much going on that you just can't do it all unfortunately, but that is a good thing and not a bad thing really that there is so much entertainment yeah. going on on board. Usually in raffles there'll be the pianist, yeah. in the botanical lounge it'll be the string duo, yeah. up in the observatory lounge it will be It Takes Two and then in the purple turtle it's the Celebrate Trio. Yes. So there's lots and lots of live music around the ship and for a small ship it's really quite great. Yeah. And then if none of that is for you, they've got a dedicated cards room or you can sit in SW19 where there is no entertainment and it's quiet and you can relax. After the end of karaoke, it was time for late night disco where we had our last drink, one for the road and then we headed to bed. We booked a last minute excursion in Cherbourg to visit Utah Beach and a number of World War II locations and that was leaving at half past eight in the morning. So we called it a relatively early night, made our way to the Borough Market for the 24 hour coffee and tea, and then headed straight back to the room where I did eat all of those bacon rolls. So a really busy day on board, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. Tomorrow we are off out and about in Cherbourg, as we said, to look at those World War II historic sites. And it's a very early get up for us because I think the coach is leaving about quarter past eight. So we shall be up uh, nice and early tomorrow. Thanks for watching our unexpected sea day on ambience. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button to never miss a video from us. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.